All right, so it's, again, really important to understand that those six chords, the one, four, five being major, the two, three, six being minor, when we combine all these together, we get very common chord sounds. Now, as long as I, I'm gonna work with the key of G here, so I know I've got G major, A minor, B minor, C major, D major, and E minor. And again, I have F sharp diminished, but I'm not gonna worry about that one. Now, do I have to play these as bar chords? No, it's easy to visualize them here because I can see my scale and I can apply the chords, but I can play those chords down here, G major, and A minor, and B minor, and C major, and D major, and E minor. And quite frequently, we will use that position because those are all kinds of common chords that we use for guitar. So what I wanna do is talk about common chord progressions, chords that are used together in various different orders. It doesn't mean they always go in this order, but these chords are used together a lot. The single most used chord progression is what we refer to as the 1-4-5, which in this case would be G, C, and D. G, C, and D. Now I'm in the key of G. 1-4-5 is just telling me to play the, the first, the fourth, and the fifth chords in that key. Okay, so think about how many songs use those three chords. You know, there's just there's thousands of songs that use those three chords. Now, one four five. The beauty of the term one four five is that you have to remember one four five is telling you the chord progression. The beauty of it is it's not telling you that it has to be in a certain key. You might play a one four five in the key of F. Or you might play a one four five in the key of C. Right, C, F, and G. You could play a 1-4-5 in any key you want to, but that chord progression, now you understand what 1-4-5 means, and you could apply it to whatever key you want to, whether it's open chords or bar chords, okay? Another really big one, and now remember, the thing about chord progressions is they don't have to just be played in that order. I could take this 1-4-5 that I just played, and for instance, I could play 5-4-1. See? Now all of a sudden it sounds like Can't You See by Marshall Tucker and a host of, of other songs. Um, the end of Hey Jude by the Beatles. So it's still a 1-4-5, but we're just playing it in a different order. So this is very common. Okay? Another one that's really important to us is what we refer to as the 1-6-4-5. Okay? Now the 1-6-4-5 gives us a lot of doo-wop style songs. Okay? G being the 1, E minor being the 6 being the four, being the five, okay? So in any sort of order, okay? If I played those chords like this, if I played uh, those same chords, but I played one, five, six, four, I would get, for instance, um, Don't Stop Believing" by Journey or Glycerine by Bush, if you remember that song, uh, When I Come Around by, by um, Green Day. Now they're in different keys, but they're all one, five, six, four. Or um, the, now again, they're all in different keys, but understand I'm just giving you them as an example in the key of G. Here's glycerine. Okay, uh, don't stop believing. Okay, so again, there are there are many others, but just so you kind of see how important it is to learn songs in terms of chord progression, and then just apply them to whatever key you want to be in. Okay, so you've got a one four five, and you've got a one six four five. Let's go ahead and take a look at the one two four five in any again any combination we'd want, but we'd be playing G major, A minor, and then four, which is C, and then five. Again, very common sounding chord progressions.
And they could be played just one, two, four, or one, two, five, or anything like that, okay? Uh, another one is the one, three, four, five. Notice how the four, five is, one, four, five is kind of always in there, but we add in the two or the three or the six or whatever. So one, two, four, five, it sound like this, or excuse me, one, three, four, five. And of course, again, these can be used in all sorts of different combinations, but what I want you to think about are breaking down and understanding we have a chord progression. We can put it in any key we want, but the common ones to start looking at are one, four, five, or one, six, four, five, or one, three, four, five, or one, two, four, five, things like that. Now, are there others? Of course, the, the possibilities of chord progressions are endless, okay? You can certainly use more than one minor chord. For instance, if we looked at um, Like a Rolling Stone by Bob Dylan, for instance, um, it goes C, D minor, E minor, F, G. It uses all five of those chords right away. That's the verse. C, D minor, E minor, F, G. And then it gets to the chorus and he does one, four, five. C, F, G. So songs will use multiple different chord progressions at different points as well, which is really cool. So it's important for you to start exploring and identifying various chord progressions in some of the music that you like to listen to because it makes your songwriting and your ear training and you know all these kind of things so much easier because you can anticipate what's coming.